Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this really cool animation. Now for the Flatpak crew members, you can download the project file in the description below, as well as all the media. And this is what we're going to be creating here on screen. It's quite a simple animation, but I wanna show you a few techniques that you can use. And I really wanna demonstrate that you can create really interesting and simple animations using just a few basic techniques and a few elements. Now for the crew members, I've also included another composition here as part of the project file. But what we're gonna do is create a new composition here. You can set the resolution to be whatever you like. Now I'm gonna start by creating a new solid here. And this can be a blue color. This is the exact settings that I'm using here if you wanna follow along. And then on top of this, we're gonna add some texture. Now I just went and sourced this texture file from online. I'm just gonna drag this here on top. And in order to get it to sit more into the background and sort of blend with our background layer, I'm just gonna to toggle the switches here, change the blending mode to be multiply. Now what we can also do is if we come up here to the curves, we can adjust the intensity of those curves there and that's just going to add more or less of that image. You can also go through and mess around with using different overlay effects, but I find the multiply is probably gonna be the best one for this style of effect. Now, the next thing is I wanna add this statue here over the top. Now, the way that I created this was I had this image here of a statue. So I just dragged this over my composition and I can reposition it however I like. Then over the top of that, I added a tint effect and I just changed the white to be this sort of, not quite full white, it just kind of gives it a bit more of a darker appearance. You can add the tint effect by just search for it, by just searching for it up here. And the other thing I did was add a drop shadow, and then I just scaled up the opacity, moved it over to the side here, and then just reduced the softness to make it a bit more prominent, and then also reduced the distance here just to kind of get it to sit off to the side. Now what I did with this is I also added a bit of an animation here. And I just did this by creating some position keyframes. So I'm just gonna reset this here. And I'm just gonna drag this down somewhere about here and then just come across here and animate this up. Something like that. I'm gonna give it a slight pause, so just another keyframe there. And then I'm gonna bring this across. Now to all of those, I can also add easy ease, and that's just gonna add that little bit of an animation there that we can see here. Now you can also go in there to the graph editor and just adjust all of those little endpoints, and that just kind of gives it a bit more of a smooth transition. You can also add motion blur to that layer and that's gonna help just kind of soften out that overall effect. Next, I just brought in my little country image here, brought this over, moved this underneath and just kind of positioned it here. And to this layer, I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard and create a position keyframe. And I want it to sort of end up somewhere about here and then just kind of move this here off screen. So that kind of animates in like that. Make me make this easy ease, add a bit of motion blur to that one as well. So we kind of get this nice little animation sort of playing out like that. Now something else I also did to that layer was I added some texture over the top. Now you can grab that texture layer from underneath and just basically duplicate that, bring it up. Then I wanna isolate that texture to the actual map image. So what we can do is with that texture layer, I'm just gonna to toggle the switches and make this track mat to the USA layer. I'm also going to turn off multiply because we don't want to see through it. We basically want to only see that layer. Now we have that layer isolated just to that map. Now, one thing I did in my original comp was I basically had this moving around. So we can do this by adding an expression control. So I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard for that texture. I'm gonna hold Option Alt on my keyboard, select that stopwatch. And this is the expression that I've typed out here. Posterize time four and then wiggle to 
comma 500. Now the posterized time, if you've if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know the posterized time is basically like changing or dropping the frame rate. So it's going to make it very sort of jittery. The other thing that we also did was we added a wiggle and the wiggle is just telling it I want the layer to move around the screen because if you just add a posterized time with no movement, you're not going to see anything. It's not going to move. So with this effect, the image sort of darts around the screen. Now, if you want that to be more, you can basically move, scale this up or you can change the speed here at the start and that's going to basically move it around faster or slower. Now, you've got to be careful with moving it too much because then you'll have to scale that image up because you'll basically cut off your shape here. Now, this is one of the techniques that I show you how to do in my Animation Master course. And if you're interested in making a videos like this or animations, you want to learn how to use After Effects to create all sorts of different animations, graphs, maps, all of that sort of stuff that you see online, then check out my Animation Master course. There'll be a link down in the description below. I'm going to walk you through the absolute basics. I've had hundreds of students go through this course and get amazing results. You can watch all the testimonials on that product page. But if you really like this style of animation and you want to know how to make these sort of animations and use After Effects more effectively, then definitely check out my Animation Master course down in the description below. If your map's getting cut off, then you just adjust that texture size. The other thing I also added in here was I added some text, which sort of sat over the top. Now, I added two different types of text here. I added the first title here and then the animation of the actual number. So basically, I just typed out my text by using the text tool here, typing out my text on screen. And then to this layer, what I did was I just added some of the preset animations. So if you're new to After Effects, then just come up here, come down to text and then animate in. And these are all just preset animations that you can use. The one that I'm using is the typewriter effect. So you can just drag that onto that layer. If you hit U, you can then bring up how quickly you want that animation to play out. So I just drag this in. Also right click on them and make them easy ease. And for the second layer, I just duplicated that text. I just used the slide up by characters one. I just dragged that on top and then adjusted that. So I had two slightly different types of animations. Now, the great thing is because they're presets, I can just move this text around. It doesn't change my animation. So really, really handy if you do a lot of this sort of animation. Now, once that text came up, then I added in another layer here, which was just an image of a boat. So I had this image here of this container ship, which is just a PNG. And then all I did to this was just add the tint and the drop shadow from the same statue layer that I had before. So I just copied these two here, pasted it onto that layer, and that's how I got the color effect. And then to get the animation, I animated the scale and the position. I started here at zero, moved across on my timeline, added another keyframe, scaled this up to 100. Now mine is negative 100. When you're using your image, you'll scale this to a positive 100. The only difference being that I flipped my image. So I changed it to be negative 100. And then with the position, I just animated a slight position offset. So it starts off here and then it sort of moves into that position there. You could take all of those keyframes, also add an easy ease, and that's how I created that little animation like that. Next, I took that bottom texture layer, dragged it all the way up to the top, and then I wanna create another animation underneath. So what I'm going to do is take my blue layer here this time. I'm going to duplicate that one, move that under that texture layer, and then I'm going to basically just offset this. So it's roughly here in the middle. I'm then going to move this one across and I want to parent this one to that texture layer. And for the texture, what I'm going to do is also hit P. I'm going to move across here on my timeline, create another keyframe. And with this one at the beginning, I'm just going to move this down. I can also add motion blur for both of these layers. We kind of end up with this animation, something like this can also just readjust this scale it up just to hide that edge a little bit more something like that and then I'm going to take that blue layer I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to off center it to the other side and for this layer I'm going to go to the solid settings and then change this to be this red color something like that 
and that will automatically match to that layer. Now, if you want to adjust this even more, you can come up here and basically just adjust this layer further, this texture layer. It's going to brighten that background up very slightly. I'm going to grab my image here of China or this map. And there's also another map here of the US. And I'm just going to reposition these to sit on these respective sides. Now to those layers, I can also add a drop shadow. So you can just add that by searching for drop shadow up here using the perspective drop shadow. They're the settings that I've used there. Just adds a very slight drop shadow to those layers. And then also what I'm going to do is with those layers, I'm just gonna hit T, create an opacity keyframe. And then I'm just gonna scale down on these. So they sort of just fade in, something quite simple. And you can also add a bit of easy ease on all of these. Move these ones in, maybe move these ones in very slightly. And then I'm also just going to create a new layer of text, something like that. And then you can just duplicate this, move it across, also change that one. And then what I want to do to all of these layers is I want to basically just parent those to that texture. So they sort of animate all in together, add blur to all of these. And maybe for these two layers, I'm just going to off center these, something like that. Or you can add a bit of an opacity keyframe to them, whatever you like. So the last thing then is just to add these little images here over the top. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that statue layer, bring it up here to the top. Now this layer will already be animated. So all I need to do is just delete those other keyframes at the end because we've already kind of got the position. If I select both of those with my playhead lined up there, I can scale this down while holding shift. And that's how we kind of get that animation. Now all I need to do is just repeat that for the second animation add the tint effect and the drop shadow. And there you go. You've got this basic sort of animation laid out like this. So that's how simple this whole animation is. There's a few techniques in there, especially the posterized time effect is super helpful in making these sort of animations really stand out. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can check out my animation master course down in the description below. If you want to watch more videos like this, then you can watch and click this video over here next. Thanks for watching and a catcher in the next one. Peace.